Hey, what's going on? Shane, it's Shane Hubbard Fit and the Simple 60 Challenge. Today, I'm going to show you how to do the perfect push-up. If you wanna do the perfect push-up, you have to focus on 10 separate steps of the push-up. I'm gonna show you all 10 of those steps all at once, and then I'm gonna break down each step so you know exactly how to do each one. Step one is making sure that your hands are directly underneath your shoulders. Step two is making sure that your feet are spread wide. Step three is making sure that you screw your hands into the ground. I'll show you what I mean in a second. Step four is inhaling and holding your breath. Step five is bracing your core. Step six is controlling the eccentric or the negative portion of the push-up. Step seven is making sure that your elbows stay in relatively close to your rib cage. Step eight is making sure that your chest goes all the way to the ground. Step nine is exhaling as you come out of the push-up or as you push off the ground back up to the starting position. And then step 10, which is the final step, is locking out the elbows at the top. All right, let's break it down one by one. All right, so number one is making sure that your hands are directly underneath your shoulders for the push-up. If you can't do one push-up in this particular form, then you don't need to worry about things like narrow push-ups or wide push-ups. We'll get to that later on after we've already mastered sort of the standard push-up. So when you're looking down at your hands when you're doing a push-up, make sure that your hands are directly underneath your shoulders. So you, from your wrist all the way to your shoulders should be a straight line with your elbows locked out, all right? They shouldn't be out in front of you, they shouldn't be sort of tucked in towards your hips, and they shouldn't be too wide or too narrow. Again, we'll focus on different variations of push-ups once we get really good at a standard push-up. All right, so after that, number two is making sure that your feet are wide. So if you're just starting off with getting really good at push-ups, Having a wider foot base is gonna give you more stability, all right? As you get more and more advanced, you can actually make push-ups more unstable by narrowing your foot position. So instead of having a wide foot position, you can make it more narrow to make it more challenging. But for now, get the widest foot position that you need to in that starting push-up position. All right, so number three is screwing your hands into the ground. So I'm gonna to cut to another video to show you what I mean by this. Before you even get started on the push-up, what you're gonna do is you're gonna screw your hands into the ground, all right? The reason why we do this is that it locks the shoulder and it locks the lats in a position that's going to support the push-up. If you don't do this initially, your elbows are more than likely going to flare out during the push-up, which is the number one problem that most people have when they're doing push-ups is that they don't really understand what their elbow position should be. They're also not gripping the ground, all right? So as you screw your hands into the ground, once you get to the locked out position, make sure you're gripping with your fingertips the ground, all right? That's gonna give you connectivity from your hand all the way through your shoulders into your core, and that's going to make you a lot stronger while you're doing the push-up. If you watch the video that I did on six exercises that are going to improve your push-up, these, this is one of those things where you, you'll understand that your core plays a big role in a push-up. So anyway, make sure that you screw your hands into the ground and then you're going to grip the ground with your fingertips. All right, step number four is inhaling and holding your breath. So you wanna inhale, it doesn't have to be the biggest inhale ever, but you wanna inhale, hold. All right, at that position, once you hold the breath, you're essentially transitioning into bracing your core, which I talked about in the six exercises that can help improve your push-up. When you brace your core, that gives you a very strong foundation to then do the push-up from. All right, once you have your core braced, now what you're going to do is you're gonna slowly lower yourself into the bottom position of the push-up. So your chest is gonna slowly lower itself towards the ground. Now I say slowly because it's very important to get good at doing push-ups slowly. You might see videos of people in the military or really fit people doing really fast push-ups, which is great and everything, but if they're doing them correctly, that's not how they started, all right? By going slow, you're actually working the muscle a lot harder. When you go really fast, it actually puts most of the stress on your joints and not so much on the muscle. So practice the slow. I, I usually tell my clients count to three until your chest hits the ground, sometimes four and five if I really wanna make them uh, practice this motion. And as you're going down, make sure that you're keeping your elbows in. So this is the next tip, making sure those elbows stay in. You don't have to touch your ribs with your elbows, but you wanna make sure that they stay in. A very common mistake, I would say mostly with women, but with all different types of people, is that when they're going down to the bottom position of the push-up, their elbows naturally flare out. All right, what I want you to do is I want you to keep them in. Somewhere between your rib cage 
in a 90 degree position. So somewhere in like that 45 degree position is really good. And if you're not sure if you're doing this or not, here's a couple of tips as to what might happen when you uh, are doing the push-up and your elbows flare out, all right? If you feel pain in your shoulders or in your neck or even in your elbows, there's a good chance that you're doing the push-up incorrectly and your elbows are flaring out, all right? You can also record yourself doing this from a top-down view, which I'm gonna show you in a cutaway video, so that you can see where your elbow should be to see if you're doing this, all right? If you have a tripod or somebody who can stand on a chair and, and point the camera down to you on the floor, you can see if your elbows are out. If they're out at like a 90 degree angle, that's not good. They should be somewhere in between, uh, you know, that 90 degree angle and that, in, in like that 45 degree angle area. Now, typically speaking with yoga push-ups, they actually encourage you to keep your elbows locked at your ribs, which is sort of a more advanced version of doing a push-up, but they have the right idea in terms of where your elbows should be during a push-up. All right, so I already sort of explained making sure that your chest goes down to the ground and that your elbows stay in. So the next very important thing to understand is that when you're pushing up from the bottom position back to the top position of the push-up, you wanna make sure that you're exhaling through your mouth. All right, so you've already, you're, you're inhaling, you're holding, and then as you push yourself back up, push the air out through pursed lips and make sure that you're really like, you're almost like you're trying to blow the ground away from you as you come up out of the push-up. All right, the last one, but certainly not the least important, is locking the elbows at the top position of the push-up. It's not a complete push-up unless you lock the elbows out at the top. All right, so that keeps you, number one, from doing partial push-ups or doing push-ups too quickly. A lot of times when I see people trying to do push-ups very quickly, they don't go through the full range of motion. If you want to work your chest muscles and if you want to get stronger in a push-up position, you have to go through full range of motion, right? There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Full range of motion is the most important thing when doing any form of exercise, whether you're pressing weights over your head, doing push-ups, or doing pulls, Full range of motion is the most important thing. All right, I know this was sort of a quick video, but I wanted to make sure that I fit this in about five minutes. Watch this as many times as you need to to understand all the steps of the perfect push-up. Thanks a ton for watching this video. If you want to see more videos just like this, don't forget to subscribe. Make sure you like this video before you leave. And if you have any questions about push-ups or any exercise relating to the push-up, make sure you put them in the comment section down below. Have a great rest of your day and I will see you in a future video.